Welcome to the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast with leading DIY lifestyle blogger, Anna Fulmer, where women are inspired with authentic stories and practical strategies to reclaim their hearts and homes by empowering transformation, one imperfect day at a time. Welcome back to another episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. I am your host, Anna Fulmer. Happy New Year. In case nobody has wished you a happy new year yet, happy new year. It is 2022. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of goals for this year. Um, Everyone's making New Year's resolutions right now. It is the season for goal setting, resolutions, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure you have come up with one yourself. If you haven't, take the next 60 seconds and come up with one because today we're going to talk about the number one reason New Year's resolutions fail. Any resolution, goal, doesn't just have to be New Year's. There's nothing magical about the month of January. But I'm going to tell you the number one reason any goal fails. According to YouGov, the top reported New Year's resolutions are exercising more, 50%. Half of you, that is probably one of your goals. 49% said saving money. 43% eating better, 37% losing weight. Maybe you have come up with a goal similar to the majority of Americans. Maybe you have a different goal. Whatever it is, stop right now, take a minute, and say your New Year's resolution out loud, whatever it may be. Uh, Whether you are currently standing in the kitchen cooking, maybe you're in the car driving, maybe you're sitting at your desk, I don't care what you are doing. Either say it out loud, write it down on a piece of paper, even better yet, text it to yourself. Please do not do this while you are driving, but I want you to be able to visualize and see the words of your goal. So if you can write it down or text it to yourself, do it right now, because I'm about to tell you what you did wrong. Feel free to pause me if you need to, wherever you are, write it down text it to yourself. Before we take a deep dive, I want you to answer these questions as you look at the goal that you have written down. Number one, is there a number? Do you see a number anywhere in the words of your goal? Is there a preposition? I just lost some of you. You're like, oh, we're going back to English class. No, hang in there. These are words like in, at, by, with, for, through. Any of those numbers, I'm sorry, any of the, (laughs) maybe I need to go to English class. Any of those words, is there a proper noun? So a person, place, or thing. If you answered no to those questions, then your goal, statistically speaking, will not make it past January 14th. 14 days, guys, that is it. 14 days, statistically speaking, people give up on their new year's resolution by January 14th. Again, this is not specific just to new year's resolutions, any goal, any resolution, 14 days. So let's get to the point. The number one reason new year's resolutions fail any goal fails is that it is not specific enough. Whether your goal is to save more money, improve your relationship with your spouse or lose weight, whatever it may be, I'm going to give you three actionable strategies to set a goal for 2022 that you can conquer with confidence. These are actionable ways that you can actually achieve your goal. All right. Strategy number one, take a look at that goal that you've written down. You need to add a concrete number to your goal. This is one of the simplest ways I have heard people uh, tell me that they have gone through this. They have actually used, there's a worksheet that'll be provided on the show notes today. It is on my blog at hammersandhugs.com. And they have used this worksheet and they have used this process. And they said, this alone was so helpful. Add a concrete number to your goal. 
So let's use the number one reported New Year's resolution according to last year's poll as an example of this strategy. I want to exercise more. Okay, let's break this down. First of all, what does more mean? I want to exercise more. Okay, well, on average, how much were you doing? Break that down. What is more? We need to define more. This could be anything from every single day or once a week. What is more? You need to add a number. What does this look like? So practically, I will exercise three days a week. Okay. I will exercise three days a week. See the difference here? More super ambiguous. I don't know what that means. You probably don't even know what that means, right? Make it specific. And in terms of um, you know, this is kind of digging into it a little bit more, but be realistic, set a number that is achievable, make it specific, but also make it achievable. Okay. As a fitness and nutrition expert, I'm telling you right now that per the American heart association, if we're just going to dive into exercise for a real quick second, since that is the majority of people in order to truly promote optimal cardio cardiovascular health, you should be exercising for 30 minutes a day of moderate to high intensity exercise, five days a week. Now, if you do not exercise at all, and the greatest amount of exercise that you typically do is from your sofa to your fridge, this is not realistic. You need to put down three days a week. All right, make sure you understand your baseline. Do not be unrealistic, okay? But I also wanna encourage you on the opposite end, an hour a day, seven days a week, not necessary. All right. You want to learn more then you definitely want to check out my fitness nutrition program, the faster way with Anna. You can certainly check it out more on my blog, but listen, five days a week, 30 minutes, moderate to high intensity exercise. This is what I do. It is sustainable, but make sure that that number is achievable and attainable. A specific concrete number, add it to your goal, whatever it is. Number two, strategy number two, add the word by, we talked about those prepositions. Listen, I'm not going to break out into some old song that we learned in high school, but the easiest way to do this is add the word by it's not a lesson in English grammar, but consider a way of how to better flesh out your goal. For example, I will exercise three days a week by doing 30 minute workouts at home by doing cardio on my elliptical at home, 30 minutes cardio would be even more specific on my elliptical at home. Again, do you see what happened here by adding the word by you're fleshing out more details that can be planned for and thought through. You have just created a goal that is actionable, something that you can actively do just by adding numbers. This is great. This is making it more specific. All right. The ambiguity has now been placed with an attainable number that fixes a point for accountability when you add that number, but now we are making it actionable. I will save $5 a week by eliminating my trip to Starbucks, right? Like something that is actionable. So add a number to add the word by. If you have not started adding these to the goal that you wrote down, do it right now because strategy number three is going to take a little bit more time and thought those first two, not that hard. You could adjust that text message right now, change it on your paper. Uh, if you're driving, think through it. Um, but, uh, add these as you're, as you're listening to this strategy, number three, add the word with a person, place, or thing. So a noun, uh, now I said proper noun earlier and I'll, and I'll explain why, but you want to add the word with a person, place, or thing. This person, place, or thing is a um, way to help you attain this goal because chances are good that you've tried this goal in the past and you have not 
succeeded. So this step number three, this results in accountability. Accountability. For example, I will exercise three days a week by doing 30 minute workouts at home with P90X30 or with the faster way with Anna with fill in the blank. Um, anxiety is a huge thing. There's actually a lot of mental health goals. I will decrease stress. I will, you know, fill in the blank. So how do we make this specific? I will cut my need for anxiety medication by 50% by consistent exercise and proper nutrition with the faster way to fat loss, weight watchers, again, fill in the blank. Maybe this is a person with Susie, right? Maybe Susie is the accountability partner there. Maybe it's just simply a person in your life. I will save $10 a week by no longer buying Starbucks with the help of Dave Ramsey's course, right? The financial guru saving, get out of debt with Dave Ramsey. Okay. There's a course example, but again, maybe that is just simply a person. Maybe it's a person. I will save $10 a week by no longer buying Starbucks with the help of Zach, my husband, whomever, whomever. So here, here is an example that I wrote. This was uh, last year. Again, it's very specific, but I will shred my abs and strengthen my core by adding an ab workout three days a week and maintaining two days a week of carb cycling with Zach for six weeks. <laughs> Again, very specific, but see that I have added a number to make it um, specific, attainable. I've described how I will accomplish it with whom and the time frame in which I've committed to this. So another tip is to set a timeline of six weeks. A frequently cited research study done in 2009 from the University College in London introduced new habits to 96 people over the space of 12 weeks. The study concluded that it took approximately nine and a half weeks for a new habit to become automatic. And the individual time frames, listen, they ranged anywhere from 18 days to 254 days in this particular study. So the point is this, you need to set a time frame that is short enough that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but long enough to actually see some improvement in your life. Again, I'll use my fitness and nutrition program as an example. The initial program is six weeks. I tell all of my clients to be prepared that if you truly want to establish a new baseline in your life, I recommend that they do the program for one more month. There's a VIP option after the six weeks that they can roll into on a monthly basis. You pay per month. And I encourage, I encourage all of my clients to do it for one more month four more weeks. And this is why this is why, because psychology has shown us that the average person psychologically, it takes 10 weeks of introducing a new habit for it to actually start to become automatic and considered a new baseline in your life. 10 weeks. Now, again, that can feel a little overwhelming for people. So I do encourage somebody, if they're trying to introduce a new habit, they're trying to establish and create a goal for themselves, simply look at six weeks, write it down on a calendar, you know, mark encouraging ways that you can achieve that goal on any given day. Again, depending on what your schedule looks like, you may need to take different steps, um, on different days. And for example, exercise, it may not ever be realistic for you to exercise on a Wednesday, depending on what your Wednesday looks like. Don't even try. If it's not realistic and it's not sustainable, don't try. Okay. Set yourself up for success. Find the days during the week that you can plan on. All right. Have a six week calendar, print one off from the internet, wherever you need to actually print something off, have it, or maybe it's digital, you know, have something that you can actually see laid out six weeks, not a year not two months, not six months, six weeks. Okay. It needs to be short enough that it doesn't feel overwhelming, but long enough that you can see some 
progress. Six weeks is a good time frame. Um, specifically at the top, make sure that you write this actionable goal. If you want a worksheet to be able to flesh this goal out step-by-step, step, you can get it on the blog, on the show notes from today's episode at hammersandhugs.com. There's a printable worksheet that you can actually go through, make your goal specific, set yourself up for success. Do not expect perfection, but pursue progress. Give yourself grace when you make a mistake because you will, you're not going to do it perfectly, but do it better next time and quit the excuses. Again, I am no Dave Ramsey. I cannot help you get out of debt quickly and save money, but I can help you with those goals. If your goals are to exercise more, eat healthier, lose weight, etc., I highly encourage you to uh, visit my website at hammersandhugs.com. Check out my six week virtual fitness nutrition program, the faster way with Anna. And we are all about pursuing progress over perfection, all natural strategies based in good research. These are scientifically proven strategies, not to mention the thousands and thousands of clients that have gone through these very strategies and seen results and are able to establish a sustainable lifestyle of wellness. I would love to help you with those goals, but regardless of your goal, I would love to hear your goal shared in the comments, whether you are listening, um, via your preferred audio platform, you're watching on YouTube, I would absolutely love to hear your goal um, and share how, how these steps, these actionable steps have helped you with your new year's resolution. And Hey, please be sure to check back, check in on the blog, wherever, email me, tell me how it went. I would absolutely love to celebrate you and your progress as we empower transformation in our lives, one imperfect day at a time. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast. It is my honor to be here with you. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss a show and leave a comment with your thoughts from today's episode below. If you are listening via your preferred podcasting platform, would you help keep us on the air by rating our show and leaving an honest review of your thoughts from today? In case you haven't heard it lately, your story matters and you are loved. This is your host, Anna Fulmer, and I will see you here next time on the Imperfectly Empowered Podcast.